Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today, we have ourselves a visitor in here. We have the Vindicator, soon to be named Johnny, who is going to be farming animals for us so we can trade with a few villagers in my big old trading hall here. And I still need to do a little bit of cleanup from the last episode. Been busy, been away on a couple of trips this week and you'll be seeing the product of the first of those trips this weekend. I'm very excited to show you this video it's been kind of an interesting couple of days we will say that much and no more but we should have a fresh video out for you on sunday which will make up for the fact that this week if you're watching these videos live i've only been able to make a couple of videos because i've been traveling but i need to put some of this stuff away and unfortunately it seems like i have left my redstone box on the nether roof so we're gonna have to go and rescue that there we go put some of this stuff away thank goodness it wasn't all the way over at the uh woodland mansion portal because yeah that was gonna be a bit of a trek to go and get that back no worries we can pop the dispensers and stuff in here as well and yeah time to bring this stuff back to the overworld there we go, there we go, getting everything tidied up, and now we need to work on getting some butchers into our trading hall, and for that we will need the butcher's workstation, which I'm fairly certain is a smoker, although I haven't really spent much time around butchers lately, so I don't know that for certain, I can't think of what else it could be though, so I'm going to go with the smoker for now, and I'm pretty sure leather worker is a cauldron, fisherman is a... Um barrel yeah so i guess the smoker is probably going to be the butcher's workstation we're going to get ourselves four butchers for the trading hall and hopefully that should run the complete set of trades that we are going to need from the butchers so probably raw meat of various kinds raw chicken raw rabbit maybe i haven't considered rabbits in this equation actually that's going to be an interesting challenge but first of course we need to get ourselves a butcher or two and of course i'm out of minecarts somehow this whole system which is meant to be uh relatively renewable is leaving me short on minecarts quite frequently but thankfully i do have a couple of the other ingredients ingredients in here i have a couple of splash potions of weakness and some golden apples so let's cure this guy and turn him into a butcher which if we pop a smoker down there he should arrive up this uh <laughs> disembarking ramp end up in there and turn into a butcher who should hopefully have some pretty decent traits and i tell you what i have been sleeping on how good these butcher trades are we have three butchers here i still need to finish up the stall for this one i kind of ran out of the spruce wood here but these guys have some pretty decent trades under their belts. For a start, raw rabbit, raw chicken, raw pork chops, raw mutton, raw beef, all of those, one per emerald after a couple of curing. I think uh, I, that got down to two raw chicken per emerald, but a couple of trades later, they are now trading it for one emerald. And I have a couple who trade that because that's a pretty good deal, considering especially that chicken is probably one of the easiest meats to acquire in any form automatically because you can just get chickens to reproduce over and over again by firing out eggs waiting until the chickens grow up and then having them get killed pork chops as well mutton beef that's all of the stuff that our vindicator is going to be farming for us these guys will also trade you an emerald for a single dried kelp block which is a bit of a tall order considering it's a really useful fuel source but also sweet berries are their master trade this is the one that unlocks last of all in any butcher's trade set and that is a great excuse to get some foxes and start a sweet berry farm. So we're going to be doing that in a future episode, and that's going to be an absolute gold mine for us in terms of emeralds. Well, it's, I, suppose, I suppose it's going to be an emerald mine, really, but now that I come to think of it, there are also some interesting trades here for emeralds, including rabbit stew, one of the more complicated food sources to make, now available to us by the chestful anytime we've got a spare pocket of emeralds. The only problem, of course, being that it doesn't stack. But rabbit stew is a really, really good food stuff. It cures all of your hunger, basically. I mean, it fills up maybe six shanks of hunger. It's the most hunger that is refilled by any food item. And the saturation on it is not bad either. So you could almost use that as a pretty decent fuel source, but for the fact that it doesn't stack. And that's very unfortunate because I really wish it did. That would be a really, really useful food to have in the tool belt, as it were. But OP, though the butcher's trades are, I feel like we are probably going to call it at three butchers. I feel like we don't really need more than that. We have all of the raw meats unlocked to trade. So I'm going to take down this whole farm. This uh, chorus fruit farm that we had growing here can get trashed. And we are going to probably find ourselves a few animals from the local countryside to start up a passive mob farm. And... 
The thing about the passive mob farm here is that it's not quite going to be the best design you could have for a Vindicator powered farm. In fact, some people will be asking, why aren't you doing this with entity cramming? Why aren't you doing this a certain way? Uh, why can't you just farm these animals manually looting and you potentially get more raw meat drops that way? And you've all got a very good point. The fact is, we're doing this with a Vindicator because it's kind of a fun mechanic to do it this way. It's the fact that we can bring a Vindicator over, name tag him a certain way, and he becomes the butcher for us, I guess. But the fact is, this is not going to be the most efficient way of setting up a passive mob farm, even one that uses a Vindicator. Because if you set up an area, say out in an ocean biome or somewhere, where, where there is an area of land that is the only place that passive mobs could spawn naturally, you could actually build a passive mob farm at the bottom of the world where the spawn rates are going to be best and you would end up having all of those killed by a Vindicator and having basically automatic, continuous mob spawning, fully automated, as opposed to player-fed mobs, which is what we're going to have to do for an area that's in close proximity to our trading hall. But proximity to the trading hall is kind of the selling point of this farm in particular. Just having an automated farm that we can automate the killing of these animals uh, so that we can have this guy do that for us in that way it's going to be nice to have the farm around here by the trading hall so that we can just walk straight in with all of the meat we've collected from that and trade with the butchers the first thing i'm going to do though is get rid of all these water sources because they are going to be a bit of a pain while we're building here otherwise <laughs> so just need to get rid of all of these with the trap doors we can reclaim the trap doors and use them for other things and this chorus fruit farm is not a terrible one we could probably rebuild it somewhere if we wanted to work with purple blocks a lot all i know is i really don't use purple for all that much all right, I've cleaned up this whole area. I've got a little glass case here that is going to be the new home for our Vindicator. I just need to make sure he can get in there okay. And this is kind of the easy part, really. We just need to get a ramp going up here with the rails. Can have him dropped into the top there, and hopefully that's where he will stay for the foreseeable future. How you doing in there, buddy? You okay? <laughs> I have kind of imprisoned you in an obsidian box for a few days. Hope you're doing all right. He seems to be fine. He's raised the axe of, I don't know, acceptance. <laughs> that's that's what this axe is, right? Uh, let's put a rail in there, and oh, I guess we should probably make that a powered rail if we want him to go anywhere. Oh, no, he's definitely going somewhere, all right. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I've made a terrible mistake. I've made a terrible mistake. I wonder if I can get him to come into this glass box. Maybe if I break this open and maybe he'll climb up into there. Uh, yes. Yeah, maybe he's in here now. Okay. <laughs> okay, that kind of works. I guess I can probably close this off from down here. Wonderful. Okay. Well, that was not exactly the way I intended that to go, but he's in now. So I, <laughs> I guess that'll do. The last thing I would like to do is just pop in that last piece of blue carpet. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> in his cushy new accommodations. And this glass tank is where we're going to be throwing in all of the uh, animals that end up getting produced by this farm. All of the cows, sheep, and whatnot are all going to end up in here. We've got four hoppers underneath here that's just going to transfer all of the output to this chest so we can collect that and go trade anytime we want to. And a small amount of time later, I have attached a smaller glass tube to the Vindicator's glass tube. And this right here is the area where we're going to be bringing up all of the mobs that have grown up and putting them in the cell with the Vindicator because the thing about mobs is that they will not drop any items if they are still baby animals. So what we want to do is make sure that any of the babies that we breed as a result of feeding animals up here on the surface are going to go down into an area where they can wait until they grow up to be fed into this system and get killed by the Vindicator. So we're going to do that with a couple of clever tricks using mob hitboxes and water, which I will explain in more detail in a moment. First of all, though, I've made myself a bit of scaffolding again, finally. It feels like ages since I've used scaffolding, seeing as I spent a lot of that on the roller coaster that I built a few episodes ago. And up here, we're going to place in some fence gates just to make sure that our water streams coming from over here are going to get cut off and so when the water flows down here it's going to stop at these fence gates and the mobs are going to be carried over into the cell with the vindicator where he's going to chop them up into nice tasty chops that we can sell to the butchers the next step is to dig down here a little bit, making sure that we have plenty of space down here for our baby mobs to end up. In fact, in the interest of symmetry, I might expand this by one block just so it's out here instead, and it's a 2x2 two two water stream that they come up instead of a 1x2, just because there's going to be multiple types of animals feeding into this central section of the farm, so I feel like we probably want a little bit of space here. At the bottom of this 2x2 two two area, which I have just walled with stone brick to make sure that it is recognizable from the outside so we don't dig into this 
by mistake or anything, we're going to carve out some 2 by 2 passageways that lead in different directions, and each of these passageways is going to channel our mobs into this area specifically. Now I do need to go and grab a couple more supplies, we need some trapdoors, we need some signs, and I brought a bunch of ice with me and a few buckets because we're going to need a fair amount of water for this. Okay, so our four groups of animals are going to be coming in from this side, this side, this side, and this side, and they're going to be collecting over four trapdoors in the middle here. And these are going to be here just to raise up the animals hitboxes a little bit, and we're going to be putting signs around the entrances on all four sides here at eye level for us right now. So one block off the ground like that. That one's just got a letter A on it, I guess, <laughs> for the moment. So eventually each of these tunnels is going to be connected to one of the four animal farms we're gonna have on the surface for cows, sheep, pigs, and presumably rabbits. I'm not quite sure if the rabbit one is going to work quite as well. And chickens are going to be nice and easy because we can just throw eggs in and do, do the same sort of thing that we did with the automatic chicken cooker a while ago. But basically each time a water stream intersects with this, the mobs, the baby mobs, are going to bob their way into here and then they're going to come to rest on these trap doors where they will stay for the most part. However, we are going to have some water streams built up above this. Let me get some ender pearls so I can hop up here real fast, as long as I don't suffocate myself in the wall. And each of these ice blocks here, if I can... Oh, can I do this? Oh, I can. Okay, great. Yeah, each of these ice blocks is going to be turned into a water source and suspended up here in this kind of elevator shaft that's going to be here. And once the mobs grow up, once they are done chilling at the bottom here and they decided to grow naturally, they will float upwards thanks to the natural buoyancy of passive mobs, and they will float up to the surface. So this is effectively a system that allows them to chill down here as baby mobs. They'll obviously be pushed into the water streams from the side here. These trapdoors won't be quite tall enough to push them up into the water stream, but once they've grown up, it'll be nice and easy for them to make their way up into this water stream, be carried along into the tank with the Vindicator, and the Vindicator's going to chop them with the axe. At the top here, we need to treat the water stream slightly differently. I will need to block this off for a second so we can encourage the water stream to run over the top of these blocks and over to the fence gates. Then I can take these two blocks out, replace those two with water sources, and that should now be fine. So any mobs that come up here, you'll find that there is no falling water the entire time. And once they get up into here, they get propelled along in the water stream and they end up in the tank with the Vindicator. Now in the interests of me not ending up in the tank with the Vindicator, I'm gonna end a pearl over here and go get some sleep. Now around the outside of the Vindicator's cell here, we're going to have four dispensers. One there, one there. We'll move over to the other side and we'll have the other ones here and here. Is that equidistant from each side of the farm? Yeah, that's looking symmetrical to me. Okay, so we'll have cows here, sheep here, pigs here, and then I guess rabbits here. Like I said, not quite sure about the rabbits yet. But around the outside of here, we need to make ourselves some stone brick, and these animals are each going to be contained in a one by one space. I think we're going to color code these, so we'll do some pink terracotta for the pigs, we'll do some brown terracotta for the cows, I guess the sheep can probably just be white concrete or something like that. Yeah, let's actually take out the stone brick and use these colors because I think those will be kind of nice to color code this whole thing, maybe with a pane of glass in front like so, or a block of glass rather in front. And yeah, I'm gonna need to get some white concrete and stuff for the other two. But we'll start with these two cows and pigs seem like a great place to start here. And the reason each of these dispensers are here is that we're actually going to have a retractable water source, which I've just made using the bucket like so. There we go. And we've uh, got buckets of water in those two dispensers and those are going to be there forcing the mobs in here to jump up and down whilst simultaneously propelling any of the baby mobs out of the back of this and into the water streams that lead down into this tank here. So while our breeding cows are going to be standing in this space here, the baby cows are actually going to fall out of the back here. And I guess we can probably build this up a little bit and make sure that they fall down this gap here in the back. So once the baby cows fall down here, they're going to fall into this water source and that's going to take them around the corner to, oh gosh, okay, that's only, <laughs> it's only one block wrong. Let's see if we can rectify that real fast. Okay, if I place a water source there, that should hopefully flood that, okay, to perfection. Good. Okay, now they'll, they'll drop into this water stream here and the pigs on the opposite side are going to come out of this section, which should not need that. In fact, it might be a little bit too long, so we'll have to have another fence gate at the end here 
so that the pigs can fall into the same water stream. And so both of those from this side are going to end up in this water stream where they'll flow into the center, fly up through here. Yep, you know the rest. Okay, let's see if we can get the other two on the other side hooked up to here. I guess we won't need this one at the back after all in that case. So to briefly recap, when we have two adult cows standing here, I'm going to be able to press this button and the cows are just going to be able to jump up and down in the water source, but they won't be able to leave this area. And what we end up doing is spamming them with wheat until they produce a child. Child, the child will immediately end up flowing down this water stream into the uh, into the collection area down there. Once it grows up, it's going to flow up this water stream and into the cell where the Vindicator is going to kill it. We still need to name tag the Vindicator, by the way. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about that. Turns out I have no white concrete anywhere, so I'm just going to have to make do with white terracotta for the sheep side for now, but I think this will probably do. Oh, and look who just turned up with his llamas. <laughs> what have you got today? Slime balls. There we go. And gunpowder. Hmm, okay, interesting. I'm not going to bother with you today, of course. I wonder if we can convince these guys to walk into the hole <laughs> and see if we can use them as bait for the Vindicator, because I'm pretty sure the Vindicator would just take out the Wandering Trader, but I don't think he would touch the llamas until the llamas inevitably spit at him. I kind of want to give it a try, but I don't know quite how I would lure them down this hole in the first place. Just use stone brick for this last one since, like I keep saying, I'm not quite sure if we're going to have rabbits or not, but that is all working. We have all four dispensers hooked up with water buckets, and all we need to do now is bring in the animals and give this whole thing a test. Of course, the good news is we have a number of animal farms set up over here already, and we there's no reason we can't bring more than two cows. In fact, we should be able to fit up to 24 of them in the same area before they start to entity cram, and that means they're going to be able to produce more babies that are going to just end up in the tank with the Vindicator over and over again. So uh, let's try and keep all of these on the lead as we go. Let's bring them across the bridge and try and install them in their new home. So far, one cow has made it in. One has come completely detached from the lead and the others are slowly making their way over here. They can get up that scaffolding on the other side. So hopefully, yes, okay, a second one has walked in and that in theory is all we need. It would be nice to get these other two in as well. But of course, I can just bring some wheat over here and we can breed those two together they'll produce a baby while they're in there and we don't have to worry too much about setting the water stream going until we have a bigger population of cows in there. In fact, I could even block off the back part here until we are ready to have them shoot down there into the water streams. Cow number three is in. All we need to do is get cow number four to wander into the hole and hopefully if I can drag it up the scaffold like so, uh, I think the bamboo might be getting in the way. Decided to grow something around the outside here just for a little bit of decor, a little bit of fun, and we're probably going to be dressing this up a little bit nicer in a future episode or on a stream or something like that. For now, let's try and... Yeah, <laughs> I don't think this one is going to be convinced to get in there somehow. Or is it? I think we might be able to do it if we can get the cow up here in the first place. Just a couple of quick nudges into the pen and... No, 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 don't go... At... Yes, okay, we got it finally. Okay, now all I need to do is run away until the leads break, which hopefully should not remove the cows from their new cell. Perfect, okay, great. Now I should be able to pick the leads up from one of these corners. There we go, got all four of our leads back and as you'll see, if I press this button here, the cows will float on the surface after a little bit of a lag spike. The cows will float here on the surface and we can feed them wheat to their heart's content, but they won't be able to get out of the top here in any way. And then once we press that again, they all float back down. There are four cows safely nestled inside of there. And eventually, once we start producing babies from these, the babies will end up in the system here. As a quick demonstration, I'm just going to give these cows a little bit of wheat. That should produce a couple of babies. We should get a little bit of experience from there, indicating that babies have in fact been born. But now, when we send those down there, oh, we do, we do have a baby down there. I wonder if maybe we can convince that baby to pop down into the water stream a little. Well, in the meantime, it's not such a big deal if the babies hang out at the top there because ultimately the babies are going to end up growing up into regular full-size cows and that's going to mean a bigger breeding population and then collision will start to take hold and the mobs will actually push themselves down into the water streams. We can always widen that out if we need to. I wonder if one of the baby cows ended up at the bottom of here yet though. Yeah, but it looks like it did. Okay, and the baby cow is currently resisting in the water stream and there is a good reason for that because babies do still try and pass pathfind to their mothers. So you'll find that this baby cow isn't actually super keen on standing on this set of trapdoors in the middle. However, when the cow eventually grows up, which we can kind of help it along with 
artificially by feeding it a little bit of wheat here. It's going to grow into a full-size cow. It's no longer going to have that dependency and look for the parents. And the cow is going to end up just getting caught up in the water streams and floating to the top here. So if we wait around for a couple of minutes here, we should see it grow into a full-size cow. And we can get the first taste of our farm in action. Now, of course, all we have to do before that is make sure that the Vindicator is named Johnny so that he can actually axe murder anything that comes into his range. I'm going to take this name tag that we reserved for another dolphin in the event that we needed one for the how did we get here advancement. And I think this one is probably one we can rename Johnny. It has to be with an H like so, and that should be fine. So now this guy, once we name tag him with that, should be quite keen on taking care of anything that comes into the glass tank with him. And I'm just gonna bust this open in the interests of name tagging this guy here and now. There we go, now he should be quite keen to ax murder some stuff. Now, all we gotta do is wait for that cow to rise up in the system, and the cow should be taken care of by our friend Johnny the Butcher. While we're waiting for that to happen though, I am gonna put a lid on this guy because I really don't want to accidentally ender pearl into the tank with him. So I think up here is probably where we're gonna have to put it to make sure that the cows don't end up bobbing up and down and getting caught on this at all. But there we go. That should hopefully mean we don't end up ender pearling into this area with him. We can always add another section of roof to the top here if we want to. In fact, yeah, let's do that now. For the interest of neatness, let's go and grab a few more dark oak slabs. And here it goes, the cow is now all grown up and is making his way into the killing chamber where Johnny the Vindicator immediately takes care of him. Fantastic, and now we open this up, we got ourselves two raw beef and some leather. Unfortunately, we cannot give him an axe that has looting because looting is a an enchantment that is exclusive to swords and unfortunately axes cannot be enchanted with it. We could give him a diamond axe, I think. If you enchant a diamond axe, I'm pretty sure Vindicators will pick it up, but yeah, unfortunately, there is real no, really no benefit to that. Like all of the animals that we end up putting in the pen with him are going to die in one hit anyway. So yeah, we're just gonna get a smaller amount than we would with a looting sword, but that's fine because the Vindicator now works for us. And I like having one of these guys on the payroll. But this farm is now almost complete. All we need to do is go and get some pigs and some sheep, maybe breed up a few more cows and I'm going to take a little bit of time in between episodes to decide what we want to go in here and how we are going to handle the rabbit situation because something tells me that's going to require a little bit more care. Maybe we could do something with llamas, but then llamas are kind of expensive to breed since they eat hay bales and not regular wheat. So maybe we'll keep that fourth one there for the wandering trader in case he messes with me or something. I'm not sure, but I kind of like how this farm is coming together. I like the terracotta and bamboo thing. Maybe when we finally decorate this and turn it into something more like a building, we can work with that as a theme. Who knows? But I'm going to spend a bit more time off camera getting some animals installed in here and I'll be back once I've done that. See you guys in a minute. Well, it took a little bit of time and there were a couple of mishaps along the way, but we did end up getting three types of animals in here. We got the cows, the pigs, and of course the sheep. The pigs were the mishap though. One thing I will point out is that you can't see it. Now you can sort of see the corner of it there. I had to place them on a trap door because a pig, unlike the cows and the sheep, is actually one block tall, so they will still be able to get out of the back part of this little pen that we have them cooped up in here and if you put a trap door underneath them the dispenser will waterlog that trap door when it pushes out the water and that will still allow the baby pigs to be flushed down into the system while leaving the adult pigs up here on the surface being able to bounce around like this so that's perfectly fine and bouncing around like that is what helps separate them out so that you can feed them the carrots or in the case of the cows and sheep some wheat i've actually managed to get a ton of carrots now out of the carrot farm that's up there there's still several stacks up there that we can bring down here and use it just was a matter of making sure I was within proximity of that and the wheat has all come from the wheat field outside the farmhouse so all in all this farm is doing pretty well and sooner or later once we've bred up the populations of animals in here we should get a few more in here as you can see a couple of pigs have made their way into the system a little prematurely because I was having trouble making sure that they couldn't escape for this early kind of section up here but that's totally fine and I think we're probably going to leave it there for today's episode. I think we are all done here with the design of this farm. At least we're probably going to work on actually dressing the whole thing up and turning it into a building and stuff later, but the farm itself 
is set up and looking pretty good. And that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixel Riffs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.